Hello everyone, this is Vaseem from Edureka and I welcome you all to the session in which I'm going to perform predictive analysis. So let's take a look at the agenda for this session. First of all, I'm going to begin with the basic introduction to predictive analysis followed by a few applications. Moving further, I will discuss the steps involved in predictive analysis and finally, I will perform predictive analysis on a data set using Python. I hope you guys are clear with the agenda. Also, don't forget to subscribe to Edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on Edureka. And do check out Edureka's machine learning certification program. The link is given in the description box below. Now, without any further ado, let us understand what exactly predictive analysis is. So, what is predictive analysis? Predictive analytics or analysis encompasses a variety of statistical techniques from data mining, predictive modeling, and machine learning that actually analyze the current and historical facts to make predictions about future or otherwise unknown events. So this is the basic definition from Wikipedia. So we basically use the previously collected data to predict an outcome or an event. So typically historical data is used to build a mathematical model. In our case, we can call it a classifier or a predictive model or a regressor, which actually captures the important trends. And then the current data is used on that model to predict what will happen next or to suggest actions to take optimal outcomes. So let us take a look at various applications where we can actually use predictive analysis. So we can use predictive analysis for a lot of things. First of all, we have campaign management. So let's say we have a campaign. We have to figure out what kind of audience will be there or what kind of our target audience is. So we can analyze the previous data of our previous campaigns that we might have managed previously. And according to that, we can figure out some suggestions or you know the course of action that we have to take. So this is one campaign management that we can do using the predictive analysis or for recent examples, let's say an election campaign, you know, a lot of people are gathering a lot of data of previous elections, like how it happened and what are the major factors that led to the winning of some so and so person. So this is how we can use predictive analysis in campaign management. Then there is customer acquisition. So we can analyze the whole business and we can figure out different points to you know figure out what kind of task or events we can actually produce in order to make our business better so that we'll be able to make customer acquisition better and then we have budgeting and forecasting as well similarly you know taking a look at previous data we can finalize some budget and forecast few uh, related uh, pointers so for example we have stock prediction using python or any other language such as r also and then we have fraud detection so we can you know manage a lot of data like for credit card companies they make use of hundreds and hundreds of users and they analyze the data to predict or you know detect the fraudulent transactions in their data and then there is promotions as well so we can analyze you know the target audience we can uh, follow the trends like they are following you know the types of content they are actually going for and then similarly you can make promotions according to that then there is pricing also like you can uh, figure out let's say you have a supermarket somewhat like uh, you know what Walmart does so you have all the pricing and everything so what you can do is figure out the price of a product after several time based on the recent purchases and also the recent scenario or the previous historical data upon which the price has been distributed accordingly and you can also plan for the demand as well using the predictive analysis so these are a few applications that I can think of right now and these are only a few applications where you can use predictive analysis to predict the for example I'll talk about football guys. So let's say if you have a favorite player and in the next season you want to see how much price he might go for in certain other clubs. So you can make use of the data at your bay and depending on the purchases that happened in previous seasons or the windows you can actually figure out somewhat around what kind of price your favorite player is going to go for. So that is one example I can think of right now. So these are a few applications of predictive analysis. Now let's move on to the next topic of the session guys, which is steps involved in predictive analysis. So this is a very important concept in this session guys. So you have to fully understand what kind of steps that goes in while you're doing a predictive analysis. So the first step has to be a data exploration. So what you have to do is gather data upload it into your program then you have to take a look at your data in a perspective which will clear certain things for you like you have to figure out what kind of data you're dealing with what are the columns what are the features that you have inside your data what kind of data it is how many numerical values are there what kind of data types are there inside your data is it a csv file or not so on so you have to figure out a lot of things while data exploration 
and after that you can uh, figure out how to clean your data by cleaning I mean uh, you have to figure out the redundancies that might hinder your model so for that you have to check for null values you have to check for missing values and then you have to figure out what kind of uh, columns will be actually better if you put them inside your model and what are the redundant variables like what kind of uh, columns that you can actually remove and will not make a difference in your model so that covers the data cleaning part and then there is modeling where you have to model your uh, or you have to select your predictive model guys so there are a lot of models that you can go for but in this session i'm going to uh, use the linear regression model because it's the very simple or the basic one so that the beginners also will be able to learn it properly after modeling you have to check for the evaluation or you have to check for the accuracy you know how your model is actually performing so let's talk about these steps in a little more detailed way so we'll talk about data exploration first of all as I've already told you data exploration is gathering your data and then taking a look at your data in a perspective that will clear a lot of things for example you will be able to see the number of columns number of rows you will have a description of all the data types what kind of variables are there you will have the mean values the average values minimum values and uh, you can also check for unique values in your columns as well so, so this all comes in data exploration and after this the second step is data cleaning and I've already told you guys data cleaning is basically getting rid of redundancies in your data which includes the missing values which may hinder and you have to make sure that your model is not going to cause overfitting or underfitting due to the noise and noise is basically irrelevant data that may be in the form of null values so you have to make sure you get rid of them or replace them with average values in the column and then there is redundancies like outliers which are not necessarily required in your model so you can remove them as well so this is all about data cleaning and then we have the third step which is modeling so for data modeling first of all you have to understand the relationship between the variables in your model so that you will figure out what kind of model you are going to go for so for example if let's say if you have a target variable in our case which will be a price of certain goods so let's say you have to figure out the relationship between variables so if you're going for linear regression you have to make sure that the relationship is continuous and let's say if you are going for logistic regression it is important that you go for continuous variables the target variable although has to be dichotomous or you what you call it categorical which is like let's say if i am trying to predict something using the logistic regression the answer would probably be yes or no or be one or zero something like that but in case of linear regression we have to make sure that there is some continuous relationship between the variables which is my target variable and my independent variables taking a look at the fourth part or the fourth step and the final step is performance analysis so after you are done uh, making a model so you have to perform certain analysis uh, which is you know checking the accuracy of the model and making sure that it's above 70 i mean if you are a beginner and if you are uh, trying to make your first prediction model anything above a 70 percent accuracy score is very good guys but i would suggest that if you are working on a good model and if you want your model to be good the accuracy should be ranging around 0 0.9 which is nine more than 90 percent and if you get it the first time it's well and good but it solely depends on your data and the kind of model selection that you do so let's take a look at the next topic in our session guys so this is basically where i'm going to perform predictive analysis using python on a data set so i have a problem statement in which i have a data set which has certain values or certain variables which has uh, columns like you know how many bedrooms does a house have and uh, what kind of square feet it is uh, grabbing and all these things that i'll show you in the data and using that data i am going to predict the house of a price so let's take it up to Jupyter Notebook guys and I'll show you what I'm going to do over there. So I have a Jupyter Notebook over here guys and if you're not familiar with Jupyter Notebook guys I suggest you to check out our tutorial on YouTube. We have a Jupyter Notebook tutorial. You will be able to learn it properly. I mean there's not really so much to learn in Jupyter Notebook. It's quite easy. That is why I'm using also and we have a cheat sheet as well. So you can go for that. So first of all, I'm going to import some dependencies. So for the first step that is data exploration. I have to get the data So for that I'm going to use the pandas library and I'll import a few other libraries as well Like I'm going to use the C bond to check the relationship between the variables basically for EDA exploratory data analysis 
and if you guys don't know what EDA is I suggest you to check out another tutorial which is exploratory data analysis that we have on our YouTube channel and then I'm going to import numpy as well just in case all right and you can see guys I have to just press shift and enter and uh, this is why I'm using a uh, Jupyter notebook because uh, the implementation is very easy and I can segregate my uh, data or the code in different cells. So I'm importing this uh, and I can just make it okay. I'll make it a little bigger so that it's visible to you everyone. What I can do is I can comment a part. Let's say installing dependencies and it is in a separate cell. So that makes it quite descriptive when you're coding and when you are trying to figure out what's wrong in your code, it helps actually. So after this, what we have to do is I'll check. I'll have to import the data for that. I'm going to use the read CSV module, which is basically going to go to the file and read my data guys. The name of the file is house.csv. We have a truncated error. All right, so guys, I have to show you something. So usually when you do this, you, when you copy the file location, you get that uh, Unicode error. But let's see if I change these backslashes to forward black backslashes. What happens? Do I still get the error or not? Okay, we have a uh, right. So I was doing something wrong here. So this is one exercise for you guys. Like earlier when I was uh, using the backward backslashes, I was getting a Unicode error, but when I change it to the forward backslashes, I'm not getting that error. So this is one question for you guys. Tell me why you think it happened in the comment sections below. Now moving on, I'll take the first look at my data guys. So I'll just use the head method to get my first data. So these are the first five rows in my data guys. So we, I have ID, we have date, the price is there, bedrooms, we have bathrooms, square feet living, and square feet lot we have floors as well waterfront is zero okay it has to be zero and one i guess there is view then grade square feet above so these are the uh, columns that i have inside my data guys so i'll check the last five rows as well for that i'm using the tail method so as you can see you can get the first look of your data using the data dot head and data dot tail method after that i check the columns of my data and let's check the shape as well guys so that we'll know what we're dealing with okay it's not callable all right so we have 21613 entries with 21 columns okay it's a quite big data set and let me tell you guys this is one data set that i found on kaggle and it's very easy to find the house data set and i am using this example of house data set because it's very common and to find this data set is very easy you go on to kaggle and you just look for house prediction uh, data sets and it will show you a lot of data sets that you can download there from okay so you can find the data set on kaggle guys now we have checked the shape as well okay i'll use one more method that is data or describe all right this is callable all right so we have all these numerical values and using the describe method we can get the 50 percent minimum maximum and the standard deviation we can get the mean value and the count as well so let's say for bedrooms the mean value is three uh, the most common entry in the bedroom section is a, a three bedroom house and then for bathrooms also is a two bathroom house square feet is almost 2079 square feet and then for maximum values we have even a 33 bedroom house as well and we have a house with eight bathrooms and the square feet is 13,540 all right so minimum value is we have a zero bedroom house okay that's going to be something else and square feet 290 so this this is how you use the describe method and this is the first step guys i am trying to do the data exploration now after this i think i'm pretty sure about what kind of data i'm dealing with now what I'm going to do, I'm going to move on to the next step that is checking for the relationship between these variables. So for that, I'm going to use the data visualization and I'm going to use a few. I'm going to use a few plot points using the Seaborn library. And if you don't know about Seaborn, we have a YouTube uh, tutorial on Seaborn library as well. So you can find out different kinds of uh, plots that you, you can use for data visualization and data visualization is nothing but it's a process where you can visualize your data and you can try to figure out the relationship between the variables. Before that, I want to check for null values or missing values. 
because I don't want to uh, get any hindrance in my data set while I'm modeling. So first of all, you have to do check for null values and let's get a sum as well. So we have zero almost. Okay, so we have no null values in this data set. So usually if you find a null value and if it's a big data set and let's say if all these values are let's say 2000 and if you have 10 missing values, you can just remove those 10 values. But if there are more null values, I suggest you to replace them with the mean value. And to find out the mean value, you can just go over here. Let's say if you have, uh, let's say if you are checking for bedrooms, how many null values are there? And let's say there are 500 out of 21,000. So you can just uh, replace the zero with this value, which is three. And similarly, for any other column, you can do the same using the mean value. So since there are no null values inside this data set because it's a very uh, clean data set that I downloaded it from Kaggle. So we're going to move on to the next step, which is visualization. And mind you guys, this is the step in my data exploration part and the data cleaning part, not the other steps that we use for predictive analysis. All right. So I have no null values, but there are a few redundancies that I want to get rid of. I'll talk about that later, guys. First of all, I'm going to use a relation plot. X, I'll use. Okay, so I want to check, or my basic aim is to predict the price of the house. All right. So for X, I'll just take price and let's check the relationship between uh, these variables. So I'll check for bedroom. All right, kind is equal to. Okay, we'll not use kind data is equal to. Data. Okay. All right, so I think we can like almost there are so many I mean So this is one uh, relationship that I'm getting over here Price is not very clear, but we are getting the relationship of the bedrooms or the most common bedroom. So which is around over here That is 0 to 5 and similarly I can check for other variables as well like bathrooms See guys, so the price is actually increasing with the number of bathrooms, but it's not necessarily uh, same for everything. So there has to be some other dependencies as well, because as we can see, since the bathrooms are rising, price is not actually rising that much. Okay, I'll just copy this. For bedrooms, the price is actually increasing uh, pretty much with each bedroom. I mean, not really. Uh, if we take a look at uh, 10 bedrooms also, the price is pretty much the same. So this is not one decisive factor I can think of for this. All right, so we'll check for some other as well. So we'll check for square feet, square feet living. So this is one le uh, linear relationship that I'm seeing over here, guys. So with each uh, square feet uh, rising, most of the prices are actually in this area only like from 0 to 40 uh, 400,000 or 40 million actually But uh, we can see that it's a linear relationship with each increasing um, square feet the price is actually rising So this is uh, one thing that has to be there in uh, inside our uh, train set. I'll tell you what a train set actually is Then there is floor as well. We can check for floors All right. Okay, so floors is actually a uh, pretty descriptive over here. So for most of the values are in, in the two floors area and then we can check for waterfront as well. Okay, we can do one thing. I'll tell you one uh, trick. So we'll add the hue over here. And this is going to be water front. So with the houses uh, which actually has a waterfront are in oranges and the other ones are in blue So you can see the relationship between them and uh, similarly I can use other okay, so let's say 
latitude and longitude so you can figure out the relationship between the variables using uh, the visualization so for me i think in this data set to get the price out we're gonna have to use bedrooms bathrooms it has to be square feet a lot of square feet has to be there floors also we can get and then what view front view we'll use square feet how we have to use and year built and year, year renovated we can leave it out from the train set and zip code also we don't actually need latitude and longitude are also not decisive in uh, prediction because we can use it for uh, visualization and we can actually get uh, the picture over there and square feet living is actually important so these are the redundancies that i was talking about inside your model so now we'll move on to the modeling part guys so so what I'll do now is I'll import a few dependencies guys. So from SK learn. So first of all, I have to import the linear regression from linear models. And I'm going to import linear regression. All right. So I'll import the model selection import. Data split all right so first thing that i have to do is i have to segregate my data into a training set and a test set so i'll do one thing guys right so i'll get my data in this cell so two things that i don't actually need inside my data are date because uh, i'll get the training data or i'll write it as train so which is going to be uh, data and i'm going to drop a few columns so i'll have to drop so i have to drop a few columns so first of all i have to drop price because it, it cannot be in my training set since i'm gonna predict it and then there has to be id we don't actually need it and then i'm going to drop date as well there's not really a pro lot of things over here so for now i'll just remove all these columns and uh, for our uh, test set or the dependent variable let's say i'm going to take uh, the variable as a test let's say and for this i'm going to use data dot or we need actually just one column that is price right method objects is not subscriptable i'm sorry i made a syntax error over here guys i have to add the axis as well now it's fine guys so now what i will do is i'll use I'm going to segregate my data into x train x test y train and y test and now i'm going to use the train test split method so first we have train then we have test we have test size which is let's say 0 0.3 and we have the random state is equal to let's say two right so we have made our x train and x train method now i'll use one variable let's say regr regressor and now i'm going to call my linear regression model it's made guys so now i'm going to use the fit method to fit my x train and x y train data guys the training data i have to fit right we have no errors here guys after this i can just uh, okay i'll take one variable let's say predict and regr dot predict x test and y test all right wait a second guys i'm sorry so now the modeling part is done guys so i'll explain what i have done over here i took uh, the linear model which is linear regression and then for segregating my data into training and testing set, I'm using the train test split. Before that, I segregated the data for my model inside which I'm using the training set, which has all the values from the data set except price, ID, and date. So I've removed these three columns because I thought these are redundant for my model right now. And the variable that I'm going to predict over here is uh, the price. So I'm taking that alone. So after that I use the train test split method to actually separate the data into training and test set 
and then I call the linear regression model over here using the regression model I am fitting the training data and after that I am using it to predict the value so now comes the part where we have to check the efficiency of the model so for regression models it is very easy guys you can just uh, check the score for this you have to provide a few values x test and y test and we have the accuracy of 0 0.70 which is not bad guys if you're using the uh, model or the data set this big it is uh, quite uh, predictable get this kind of accuracy but you can do something else to improve the accuracy I mean uh, you can look at the data and remove all the values that you find will help you into improving our accuracy like you can remove latitude longitude you can remove zip code a year renovated year built that you can uh, actually remove waterfront and view as well or keep only a few values that you actually need which is bedrooms bathrooms I think and everything related to square feet that if you keep in your training set then it's going to be a higher accuracy for you guys all right so now that we are done with the session guys I want to give you a exercise sort of which you can do for practicing this so I have used the linear regression model over here so I want you to do one thing guys check out other classifiers and regressor models that you can use to predict a value I mean we have a tutorial on all of them on our YouTube channel and see if you can use the same data to make a, a prediction model using other classifiers like a random forest classifier then we have a decision tree then you can use the logistic regression for this as well I mean if you have continuous data then you can go for linear regression but if you find a categorical data let's say we have waterfront or not so you can check for that as well so now that we are done with the session guys don't forget to subscribe to edureka for more exciting tutorials and press the bell icon to get the latest updates on edureka and check out edureka's machine learning certification program the link is given in the description box below and if you have any questions you can mention them in the comment section below thank you i hope you have enjoyed listening to this video Please be kind enough to like it and you can comment any of your doubts and queries and we will reply them at the earliest. Do look out for more videos in our playlist and subscribe to Edureka channel to learn more. Happy learning!